So underneath the hood in the action support class and modules in Ruby on Rails, there's this delegate option. And delegate's pretty useful for the way you can expose um, particular objects you create on public methods that you create within your classes. So that sounds like a bunch of garbled mess, but basically if you create methods on, on an object in your app using action, action support, which is any basically any Rails app in this case, you can expose certain methods to the other class that are easy, easy more easily accessible. So the API doc has some basic principles of, of how to do that here. You would set this delegate method, uh, choose which methods to delegate from. And in this case, greeter's got these two, like hello and goodbye, and then you could say to greeter, and that allows you to expose those to your foo class here. So you could say foo.goodbye and still get access to those methods. So it's a nice way to have some relationships within an app. Um, as an example, I, I built up a very primitive app using my kickoff tailwind template. Um, I generated two models. One was already done based on my tailwind template, which was the user model. So if you run that same template, just like a Rails new, um, you'll get this stuff out of the box. One thing that's new here is the profile. I generated a model that just has a basic tagline. If we go to uh, profile and say column names, you'll just see the basic stuff there. That's it's associated to the user. So I ran something like so rails generate model. Um, let's see profile and user references. And then I did, uh, what did I say? Tag line was just like a string or something like that. And just ran that generator and set up this has one association on the user model. And that's just saying, okay, a user's gonna have one profile. And this is all just for demonstration purposes. I'm not gonna really go into any UI per se. But on the profile side, now that we have that association, we can do a little bit more and define things about maybe the user that is through the, through the profile itself. So we could say maybe a username is gonna be believe this could work. So belong to user, I believe we could still get the access of, of these two things. But the thing here is we need to delegate. Here's where that method comes into play. And we'll say username. And then description. And we'll leave that one off. We'll just say two for now. And then we'll say uh, user. Because we're going to delegate all this stuff in here to that class based on what we're passing right here. So the username is the same, the main one we're going to delegate. And then um, you can additionally allow nil. And we'll just say true, it's true or false for that. And then you could set a prefix if you want to, if you want it to get fancy. I'm not sure that I'll do that, but we can see how this works at the moment. I did go ahead and create some uh, database records. So I'll show you the user you can create in the UI if you want. But if you just say user dot last, um, you'll see that I created a basic user and then also a profile. Dot last the same thing, um, basic stuff, we could run this all from the command line if you want. Uh, so for user, you might run create. And because we're using device, you need a name column in my in this templates case. Uh, so Andy would be mine. Uh, email for sure. You can enter yours and then password. And then password confirmation. Pass in your stuff there and just run that and it'll go ahead and create it. And the same is true for the profile. You can do the same methods there. Um, the main thing you want to pass to the profile is make sure you add a user ID, which is going to be probably one if it's a brand new app or whatever user ID you want to use. And then also a tagline, since that's the field we're going to actually kind of fill. The rest would be auto-generated. So if that was made, we can kind of go through this process and see how it works. Um, so let's get the instance of profile. So we'll just say p.profile. Dot last and then I, I'll do the u to so user dot last or first. So now p can bring back that and u brings back the user. So that's good. So 
in this case for profile, since we added that delegation method, we could say profile.username, and I believe, oh, maybe not, let's see, undefined variable first name. Okay, so in console, I've went back and kind of refactored some of this, but if we get our first profile that we created, I'll get a, just a generic return of that. Uh, for that, I want to grab the email, and I went ahead and set that up on the delegation, as you see here. So we're delegating the email of the user uh, to the user class, allows the profile to develop, delegate to that, um, and allow true for nil. So if there's no email, then that's okay, even though we probably would never be the case. We could set that to false. One more thing I want to try to add is like a username. So for a profile, you'd probably enter that. Um, so profile.username, which is how it would end up being. To get that though, we need to kind of go to the user model and delegate a new method over to that. Um, so the way I think I'm going to do that is another delegate. Username to profile. And we'll just start there and see if this works. So. Um, if we get that back, I'm going to try this. I might reload. I might get an error. I'm get, I've been getting errors trying to hash this out, but it's been a little tough. So we've got P still. So P still stands for our profile. If we can get username, I'd be happy camper. But we're getting this instead. And I could still get it, I believe, if I go p.user.username. We get that method, but it would be nice to not have to do that, right? So I'm trying to figure out why this isn't the case. Uh, if we could just go ahead and delegate just passing profile. So maybe instead of P, I'll just go profile because profile that last make that clearer. So profile, we'll have that. We could say profile dot user and still get my information. But what I want to get is the username. There we go. So now I can get it, um, which is perfect. That's ex I think I just needed to rehash or reload some of that data there. Um, but what we can do also is now get email. So all that's coming through is as the there's no like chain effect. I don't have to do profile dot user dot that. So that's kind of the perk of delegate. You could, you can pass around methods and use them as like a single uh, child of the main parent class as opposed to going through loops and going down the dot route, you know. So one more thing we could do is add a prefix to this. So we could say, say on the user side or on the profile side, we can add a prefix of user maybe. Um, that allows us to say, I'll probably reload this again. And where's that? There's it. Reload. Um, so profile dot user email I think would maybe work. Maybe I'll do this all again. So profile equals profile last. Uh, what did I do? Whoops. Okay. So profile dot user email. Yeah, so now that works that way. We've got this prefix of user underscore, then the, the column you're going for. So profile dot user, this doesn't make any sense, but username still returns what we're after. And then we still have our actual columns on the profile itself. So we still get tagline that comes back, which would be my profile. So the cool thing is these don't exist on the profile itself. So if we come and return profile back, that none of that stuff's on that model or that database layer, but we can add our own methods using the delegate pattern, which is a great little feature to have. And it's just built in the rails. So you don't have to worry about integrating anything new. You just need to pass this new syntax and the appropriate uh, methods and whatnot to go between each models. This comes in super useful when you get into more complex structures or data structures where you're doing a lot of relationships between models. And you can just simplify that flow. It's less easier, or it's easier to remember um, like a single dot orientation down to some model or method um, as opposed to chaining that, doing that big chain effect.
So hope that's useful. I think the most useful thing I read was honestly the, the GitHub um, source code to the actual module itself in Rails. So if you've ever not been sure of how something works in Rails, honestly, go, go check out the source code. The, the comments in here are what make or break the thing. Like it's it's perfect. Um, some of it's a little abstract, but they do give real, real life examples. I kind of stole this one here uh, with some different things. Um, different methods in our example, but they're very similar. One extra thing here is you could pass it as a private delegation. So typically most delegation patterns are public by default. Um, if you want it to be private, you can make it that way. So if you were to access it from that class, it can be, it would throw a no method error as opposed to actually just coming back with a string or whatever values at the end. So hopefully that's useful. I like these little tidbits of tips I pick up and see along the way that I find useful. It just kind of makes the development workflow, uh, workflow a little more practical as a developer and as you get used to the framework. So uh, that's all for now. I I'll try to keep these coming if I can. Um, they mostly pop up as I need them. So that's not something I'm just planning to produce, but this stuff comes and goes pretty fast and often. So I will see you in the next one. Peace.